Welcome to the Community News with Gori. Hindu Heritage Day 2015 was more than an ordinary mela. It was the transference of culture among generations. The beauty, the respect and the authenticity of our heritage not only being passed on to the next generation but also being disseminated into the mainstream with pride. A beautiful celebration of our culture hosted by Vishwa Hindu Parishad organization and attended by thousands of people. Every year, this vibrant heritage festival is organized by the national organization Vishwa Hindu Parishad World Hindu Council of America in an effort to unite Hindus across the world. This event aims to instill devotion to the Hindu way of life, cultivate self-respect and respect for all people, and establish a truly global Hindu network. The cultural program this year had record audience participation, enjoying a superlative program. Each year, the dance schools and their outstanding teachers send in their best entries for performances. This year, 28 Boston schools of music and dance masters participated in the cultural program. The theme of the year's cultural program was Parivartan or Change. Here's a few glimpses interwoven with on-location interviews with some organizing team members exclusively for the Foundations TV and online video channel, spreading inspiration through awareness. Welcome to Foundations TV, everybody. We are here on location for a wonderful Mela, if I can call it. It is Hindu Heritage Day that is being celebrated in Marlboro today. Thousands of people are here. There's a wonderful cultural show that's going on. And there's a gathering of lots and lots of booths. People are selling their stuff. There's vendors. There's a whole bunch of cultural activities that are going on today. And we have with us the president, Dr. Abhay Asthana. So uh, please tell us something about the organization yeah so uh, thank you Gauri for doing this <coughs> uh, so Vishwan Dupashat of America uh, is perhaps the oldest uh, Hindu organization in this country it was founded in like 1970 and since then it's been doing a wonderful work uh, throughout the country and we do many things so this Hindu Heritage Day is one of the programs that we do and this actually was started uh, way back in the mid 90s and the only purpose behind Hindu Heritage Day is once a year we get together as Hindus. I mean, we have so many different uh, organizations. We have Tamil Sangam, Telugu uh, Sangam, we have Rajasthani group, Bihari group, Punjabi group, this and that. But the region aside. Yes, once a, year, once a year we get together here as Hindus. And we are. 1.2 billion Hindus around the world, right? So it doesn't matter if you are from Fiji, if you are from the Caribbean, if you are from South Africa, if you are from UK, if you are from USA, if you are from any region in Bharat, let's get together and, and, and come together as Hindus to celebrate the, the gift that we have gotten from the Rishis, right? I mean, the, all this is the gift from our Rishis. And we, we need to remember them, we need to celebrate that and most of all we need to pass it on to our children right? because that's, that's the only thing that will sustain all this uh, civilization of ours. Right? So it's, it's a celebration of our Sanskriti, of our civilization. That's what I wanted to say.
That program has now going on, been going on for more than 40 years. During these years, they have invited numerous guests on their program, including the greatest of great uh, from India who ever visited here. Or they especially invited troops of uh, India to conduct programs here. The, uh, I'm talking about days when you did not have any programs. These days, every weekend, you have two or three Indian programs going on. But think of 70s, 80s, when you didn't have too many programs. And they are the ones, they started that seed in the Boston area. They would organize programs. Through these years, they have served generations of Indians in this area, actually, and have served the community in bringing it together. The biggest and best part is they also promote the uh, non-profit organizations in this area by giving free ads of theirs on their... ...really dedicated their lives for the community. So it says, Paro Parai Thalanti Vrikshaha, Paro Parai Bahanti Natya, Paro Parai Duhanti Gavaha, Paro Parartha Idam Shariram. So, on behalf of the New England Hindu community, it is our distinct honor to present you the Sanskriti Saurabh Saman. For your exemplary vision, dedication, spirituality, devotion in the service of the community. Your radio program is a shining example of your selflessness. You serve as an inspiration and as an eternal reminder that seva and sacrifice are the core of Hindu dharma. So it's, a, it's an honor and a privilege for me. तो नहीं लेकिन अगर आप ने ये कहा तो उसके लिए बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद आप सबका ये सफर हमारा उस वक्त शुरू हुआ जब महेश मेहता जी के घर पर छोटी सी मीटिंग हुआ करती थी विश्व हिंदू परिषद की और अंजलि पांड्या जी और उसके बाद में फिर नंद किशोर शर्मा जी के साथ हमारा सहयोग रहा उसके बाद ब्रिजभूषण गढ़ साहब टोलैंड में जब वो कैंप कैंप लगाया करते थे बाल कैंप तो वहाँ से हमारा इकट्ठा सहयोग चल रहा है उसके लिए हम आप सबके बहुत बहुत आभारी हैं कि आपने हमारा इतना साथ दिया इन दिनों तो मैं तो बस क्योंकि हमारा रेडियो प्रोग्राम है म्यूजिक से रिलेटेड है तो मैं साहिल ध्यानवी का एक शेयर ज़रूर पढ़ूँगा कि इज्जतें शहरतें चाहतें उल्फतें कोई भी चीज़ दुनिया में रहती नहीं आज मैं हूँ जहाँ कल कोई और था आज मैं हूँ जहाँ कल कोई और था मैं भी एक दौर हूँ वो भी एक दौर था तो इसके साथ क्योंकि तो आज से 40 साल पहले हमने प्यार का नगमा है मौजों की रवानी है जिंदगी और कुछ भी
65. Shloka number 65 is Sri Das Sri Sas Sri Nivasaha Sri Nidhis Sri Vibhavanaha Sri Tara Sri Karasreyaha Sri Maan Lokatrayakshayaha Great job, that was correct. <laughs> Namaste, my name is Arthi. Can you please recite Sloka number 16? 16? Shloka number 16 is Prajishnar Pojanam Bhokta Sahishnar Jagadadijaha Anago Vijayojeta Visvayoni Punar Vasuhu Good job, that is correct. Welcome to Foundations TV. We are here backstage for the Hindu Heritage Day. It is being celebrated here today in Marlboro and we have with us Mr. Sanjay Kaul who is the convener of the entire show today. And I have actually a very specific question for you Sanjay ji. Welcome to Foundations TV first. Thank you. I'm so glad you came. So my question to Sanjay ji is um, I see a lot of kids involved in this program uh, from the very youngest age to uh, senior kids as well. I know this has been going on for many many years and there are other programs that focus on uh, passing on the traditions and the heritage, Hindu heritage specifically to the next generation. So could you please elaborate on that? Yeah, right from beginning what we as an association uh, have observed that it is the children that we have to invest in in this country because the first generation people who came back from India and settled here, they know what their heritage is, they know what their culture is, but the children do not see that because they are not, they're not breathing the same air. So this uh, Vishwa Hindu Parishad started this chapter here in Massachusetts and we have been organizing this Hindu Heritage Day for last 19 years and the point here is to bring children and let them realize what their heritage is of their parents, of them own and then also get a sense of the uh, by participating in the cultural program by coming to the other aspect of the uh, Hindu Heritage Day which is the Mela where they can see what uh, what do people wear uh, what kind of jewelry do women wear saris and other things outfits and they buy for themselves and they feel so pleased by uh, uh, associating with that and the third aspect of it is the food and when they come there is the Indian food being served and they relish it and they enjoy it when they are there with their friends actually they like to be in association of their friends and boost on each other that oh I ate this have you eaten that so kind of brings them closer to their roots that's our attempt basically I think you said it beautifully, it becomes part of our own identity and they start to feel a sense of belonging when there's all these, you know, the food aspect, the clothing aspect, the jewelry and the dances and the songs and the music that really adds in shlokas. I saw a little girl who was, uh, who had memorized the whole uh, shloka and she was going by the number, it was amazing. A absolutely, it's not just remembering the shlokas, it's the diction, how clearly they talk about what they have learned and how easily they say it. And that is what it is uh, a matter of pride for us as a parent. I have my children who have gone through this and there are many more younger children who are getting associated. Now the community has grown by many folds in Boston area. Over the 19 years when we started we could hardly get 400 people. Now it has gone in thousands and that has shown the popularity that parents feel in bringing their children and uh, having them participate, having them uh, observe and they, they feel that by that connection they are giving something to their children. I think that goes to your organization and to you as the leader of the organization to uh, continue to grow this every single year. So that is really commendable. So congratulations for that. Thank you so much. And we are also pleased that not only we as an association are doing it, it's the community that wants it done and they are participating so well. In addition to that, uh, the the um, uh, political system here, the state government, uh, right now we have uh, the Republican governor before him, we had the Democratic governors, they all appreciate what the uh, Indian community and the Hindu community brings to the uh, uh, table and they see how our numbers are growing and how we are contributing to the system and they have been recognizing uh, every year Hindu Heritage Day on May 16th and this year as well. Actually, I was very pleased with the current governor because in the uh, proclamation that he claimed uh, May 16th as the Hindu Heritage Day, he has so well written about Hindus, how we are a major force in this state, in our contributions, in how we are uh, model citizens and that is so appreciative. 
That's wonderful. So not only are we, part of, we are passing the traditions and the heritage to the next generation, but we're also spreading the message and making sure that the mainstream understands who we are and Absolutely. takes pride in our community. Absolutely. We are no more the snake charmers at one point that people were thought, thinking of us as, but now we are the technocrats, we are the bureaucrats, we are the businessmen, and we are successful at what we are doing. And that's the pride that we take in our stuff and our children take in us as a community, and they feel proud of who they are. Wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming here. Thank you. Welcome to Foundations TV. Everybody, we are here on location for the Hindu Heritage Day, and I have here my guest, Mr. Anit Gupta, who is the coordinator of the entire Mela. If you can see all the hustle and bustle uh, behind us, there's a lot of people having a good time. There's tons of vendors, and people are walking in and out and buying stuff and uh, chatting and networking. It's a very fun evening here at uh, the Marlboro Middle School. So, Anit Ji, welcome to Foundations TV. So welcome. Welcome. The in the Foundation TV, it's nice to have you here and you know you. cover the program. Thank you. And uh, yeah, so, so I have been associated with the VHPA, our Vishwa Hindu Parishad, for about 18 years now. Wow. And we have been organizing this program here in in the Boston area for uh, 14 years. I think maybe more than 14 years. I have been doing it for 14 years. So maybe I think we're doing before that. And this year, actually, for this, I am organizing. I was kind of helping with the organizing the mela uh, part. We had a very great response, enthusiastic response from the various vendors and the uh, charitable organizations who want to, you know, come here and promote their, you know. And then we have about 30 vendors here, and out of those, we have about 15, 16 uh, vendors, the commercial vendors who are promoting their st uh, jewelry and Indian clothing. And people are really look forward to this to buy, you know, traditional Indian jewelry and a lot of saris, Indian suits. So people, you know, they, they look forward to buy the stuff here during this event. So that has been a and we have a great response. And we have here backstage with us Samir Astana, who has been managing, uh, as he calls it, herding the cattle, <laughs> getting people on stage on time. And um, so Samir, tell us how has the excitement level been? It's been pretty high, as you actually just saw. People are just kind of going all over the place. Um, performers coming in and out, but everyone's very, very excited. The energy level is really high, and everyone has prepared remarkably. So they all want to go out there, showcase what they've done, you know, uh, really what they've prepared. And and uh, it's a little chaotic with everyone coming and going, trying to find everyone, make sure they're here. But um, everyone's very excited to, to perform and. and and, and be a part of the program. So do you see happening?
little more about this project? Why are you building this and what is it? Right. So, <clears throat> is it on? Yeah. yeah. So, <clears throat> like you said, uh, we have uh, many temples and uh, religious institutions. Uh, for uh, religious devotion, right, out of our homes and our families. But uh, what we do not have is a common facility that can serve the Hindu community, the community-wide needs, from large celebrations to small meetings, from child care to elderly care, from spiritual fulfillment to academic development. So the center goes beyond what we normally would do in a, in a temple. So that, that's, the, uh, that's the reason why we want to have a Hindu community center. So the temple may, will be a part of it, but it will go beyond what a regular temple would do. Excellent. Tell me more about how will this Hindu uh, uh, community center serve and how will, will it be useful to the greater Indian community in the Boston area? Yeah, so the community center will serve the social, the educational and the cultural needs for the entire community. So it's for the Hindu community at large. So no matter which region of India you come from, there will be something for you at the center. <clears throat> so it'll, what we are planning to do is to have a support and services that are there for children's spiritual needs, for the elderly, people, elderly community, I mean, so service needs, it'll, it'll have like a free medical clinic. This the center will be available for community activities, including pujas, weddings, satsangs, yoga classes, festival celebrations, for parties, for conferences, for conventions, and for retreats. Excellent. So tell me now, where will this uh, Hindu community center be located? and how big will it be? Yeah, so actually we are very fortunate because there is a very generous person, a family, uh, Sri Tej Tandanji and Sri Prem Tandanji. So uh, they came forward last year and they proposed to us that we would like Vishwandu Parishad to build this community center, but they donated the land and they also donated a large sum of seed money for us to get started. So the center is located on a 10-acre scenic land right next to the banks of the historic Concord River. The building will be about uh, 24, 25, 5,000 square feet. And it's a four-story building. <clears throat> and it's in a very beautiful uh, setting, the surrounding settings. We'll have plenty of parking area, pathways, haven area, rear, in the rear of the property, we'll have like a huge place where you could do actual havens out in the open. It's surrounded with rare foliage, natural settings, and native to the conservation land that's around that uh, Concord River banks. So it's a four-story building with uh, like 6,000 square feet for each floor and we'll have a rooftop terrace where you could do lots of interesting things. Excellent, very interesting. Can you tell me when will you start the construction? Yeah, so we, are, we have some, like I said, some seed money. So we are planning, uh, we've been planning for the last six months. So we are planning to have the foundation ceremony sometime in July of this year. And uh, <clears throat> we, would, we would like the community to come forward and then support this uh, activity. And we have raised about $850,000 already for the first phase of the construction. We'll need uh, maybe a three, four, $100,000 more to get going. And I'd like let Sanjay to continue. Thank you so much, Abhaji, for providing that information about the Om Hindu Community Center, which is a vision and project of Vishwa Hindu Parishad. As Abhaji said,
He roams the places where the dead are burned. His companions are ghosts and goblins. There is a war with them. What are you saying? How can you insult your daughter and her husband, who is the Lord of three worlds? You insulted me when you married. I feel sorry for you, Father, because your pride has brought upon yourself your own destruction. I will burn myself in the sacrificial fire so that I shall be born again to marry Lord Shiva once more, but you will no longer be my father. What does Sethi represent? Why does she immolate herself? What are the consequences? Upon saying this, Sethi immediately burned herself in the fire reciting Shiva's name. Shiva heard her calls and immediately understood what had happened. Shiva took a strand of his hair and threw it to the floor. A great tragedy has befallen. Sati must be abandoned. Very good, dry and better go. I have no blessings for you. You are married to that dirty temple in Shiva. He roams the places where the dead are burned. His companions are ghosts and goblins. There is a war with him. What are you saying? How can you insult your daughter and her husband, who is the lord of the three worlds? You insulted me when you married. I feel sorry for you, Father, because your pride has brought upon yourself your own destruction. I will burn myself in the sacrificial fire so that I shall be born again to marry Lord Shiva once more, but you will no longer be my father. What does Sethi represent? Why does she immolate herself? What are the consequences? Upon saying this, Sethi immediately burned herself in the fire reciting Shiva's name. Shiva heard her calls and immediately understood what had happened. Shiva took a strand of his hair and threw it to the floor. A great tragedy has befallen. Sati must be abandoned. Very good, right? Better go.